good morning from Lock Haven, Pennsylvania, home of us when I was in grad school. <laughs> um, we had a great evening catching up with our friend Mary and had breakfast with all of our neighbors, old neighbors, this morning and then um, borrowed the car and we're out checking around the city or the town to see what's changed and what's the same and we're gonna stop by and check out the college. I guess they've been doing a lot of uh, construction there and it looks pretty different from when I was there and then we're gonna go to the Piper Cub Museum. Uh, this used to be the place where they built Piper Cubs. Well, not just Pipers. Piper Cubs. I should say Pipers. Like they have a museum here now so uh, it's kind of cool since we live in Alaska and lots of people fly Pipers up there so we're gonna go check it out. Ben went when I was in school here. He took my grandpa who was a pilot but um, I never got to go so I'm really excited to check that out. And it's neat driving through the a place that you haven't been in at least eight years or so. You know, because some things have changed. Generally, things are the same, but it's a unique feeling. It is. So here's a little view of what we're seeing. This is town. They've lost a lot of their leaves here, so definitely moving into a more of a wintry feeling. But it's definitely a small east coast town in the hills of Pennsylvania. Yep. You know, there's a certain charm to it. There it is. It's a lovely little town. I was visiting with one of my friends from grad school last night and she said she feels the same way I did when we came back here. Like, I didn't love it when we lived here because we were tortured in grad school, but uh, coming back it feels like coming home and it's really nice to see people that you knew and oh, I did some rotations there. Guy singer. Just fun to reminisce. start at any time for you. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, this section out here, all these boards are numbered. Number one's going to start you guys off at this very first one, and if you just follow the numbers around, it'll take you around in order, okay? Okay, and then the hangers down below, right? Yep, the hangers back on the first floor. You guys can either uh, take the steps under that yellow hanger sign okay. right there. Yeah, I kind of remember it. Yep, you can see it through the window there. You guys are allowed to go down there and walk around. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. Oh, look at that. Or you can take the elevator. We'll take the stairs. Well, thank you so much. Let's start with the movie. Now we're going to watch a short video called The Cub That Roared in their theater. The unfortunate part was it's really a neat little museum. So in case you're wondering why a couple RVers from Alaska are at a uh, Piper Super Cub Museum or the Piper Museum, uh, pipers are huge in Alaska, specifically the cub, and uh, they're very agile and they can take off and land in the most ridiculous places possible. So I'm not going to put the links below, but I would like you to type into your YouTube search engine, uh, Piper Super Cub Alaska Short Takeoff, and you will see these things take off and land on no more than like 20 or 30 feet. It is completely amazing. And from the movie we just watched, we learned that that was also really handy during World War II. Yeah, they actually used Pipers for World War II because of their capacity to land in a small range. And another thing is these things are, you know, you'll see Pipers from like the 50s and 40s and 30s, and they just keep getting restored. So these planes that are flying around Alaska today are coming up on... 80, 90. Just like Cessnas and Yeah, otters. so they just keep restoring them, putting new engines. And they do the same thing with going. the de Havilland beavers. Yeah, the de Havilland beavers, those are another one. Yeah. So we're just going to walk around and check things out.
Alaska. And uh, when we flew out of Homer, we flew in Cessnas, but when I flew out of Anchorage, I flew in these Navajos. Pretty cool planes. I use a lot of them in Alaska. Air Alaska Transit in Anchorage. AAT. AAT. That's what I flew with, and they had Navajos. So Rebecca and I do plan on getting our private pilot's licenses in the next few years, and it just seems fitting. But what we'd probably end up doing, I get away from that TV, is uh, buying an airplane so we don't have to rent an airplane, which is probably one of the most expensive parts, and fly to an area that does it fairly cheap, with you know, Florida or somewhere in the Midwest. And then we would get up to Alaska, and then we would take a set of Alaska flying lessons because it's a completely different ball game. I know the principles are the same, but everything in Alaska is a little more extreme, and it's an easy way to die. Yeah, it's a really unique environment because how quickly the weather can change there. Yeah, and uh, some local knowledge before we go flying a plane around Alaska would really help. Now the real fun starts. We actually get to see the airplanes. I think this would be sufficient. This is a Cheyenne. So we, we're going to have a private jet one of these days. You take some of these seats out, make a little bit more room. Yeah, but we wouldn't be able to land in the bush. Oh, come on, well, focus. There you, you go. You got a different plane for that. Oh, okay. Pressurized cabin, so I wonder if this could make it across the uh, pond. I don't know. What's the, what's the range? Just, oh, okay. Flying is fun. Going through airports and dealing with all the BS is not fun. So this and we love traveling. Flies 400 miles per hour. How far is it across the Atlantic? Uh, you Have could definitely. Be... This one has a 2,176 mile range. But that's all dependent on conditions. And but speed, you could probably. It's 1,200 to 2,100. But you could probably hop from Greenland, Iceland, then over up into the Nordic part of Europe. Yeah, I'm sure. well, and I mean, then, those little tiny planes flew across the Atlantic. This part is pretty cool. It's part of the uh, Cessnich, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, propeller exhibit. So what you got is wood glued together like so, and then they sand it to make the pitch, and then here's the next layer. They Start doing more to it, and then they put these metal edges on it. I'm not sure what that's called. And then over here, the finished product. Pretty cool, wooden propellers. <laughs> Here's one of the military L4s. And look at the simplicity in there. Four gauges, it's insane. Like you get in an airplane now and there's a huge dashboard. Four back then. Very basic. Stick rudder and four gauges. It's gotta be uh, some appeal to the, keeping it very simple. So this plane, this actual plane, it's a super cruiser, flew around the world in 1947. Um, and those are the names of all the towns that it went to, and on the other side, well, to, and on the other side are flags. And it was, it was restored in 1997. We got a co pilot in there. do a flight simulator, but I'm a little nervous that you're all watching me because this is the first time I've done it and I probably will wreck the plane. There we go. I'm up. Now I can also see what's going on on this computer screen right here. I wonder what happens if I push this button. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. Woo. <laughs> what? Cover. Oh, you're going into a roll. Oh, 
Uh oh, there's suburbia. You gonna come in for a landing? Mm, well, I wasn't really planning to, but I am now. Hey, I landed. You did? Well, now it. Oh. I bounced and went back up. Damn it. See, it's forgiving. It's set in like video game mode, not reality Real life. mode. Yeah, you're going for a barrel roll okay, now. Okay, well, let's just play with it. I'm a pilot now. Okay, certifiable, huh? <laughs> now we're off to have some lunch. This is Main Street in Lock Haven, and right here to the left is the old Roxy movie theater. For years afterwards, I still used to get the emails telling me what movies were coming to Lock Haven. I think I finally unsubscribed a couple years ago. Um, we are, this is Main Street, lots of little restaurants and businesses and whatnot. Um, used to have breakfast at the Texas restaurant there with my friends. We're gonna go to OIP, the original Italian pizza restaurant here, and have an Italian sandwich today for lunch. So. Nice old-fashioned downtown district. It's really pretty. Well, the OIP in downtown turned out to not open until 4, and it's 1.40 right now. So, um, the one over in Mill Hall is open, so we're going to drive on down and go there for lunch instead. So, it's, Mill Hall is a separate town, but it, it's like it's two miles away. It. It's, well, it's not even two miles away. They run together. It's yeah. just... It's like Castania is not really a separate town. It's just on the other side of the freeway. It's different. It's unique. Yeah. It's older East Coast stuff. Yeah, it's the way that East Coast has all these little boroughs, mm -hmm. neighborhoods, townships. Yeah. Townships. That's the word. It was the same way in Pittsburgh. We lived in Pittsburgh, but we lived in Shaler Township, out on the edge of Pittsburgh. So, all right. Well, we'll uh, we'll let you know what we end up having, but should be a tasty Italian treat. I ordered a hot Italian sandwich, and it's a great thing to get in this part of the country. And Beck ordered an authentic calzone with ham and uh, cheese inside and the sauce on the outside. Yep, and it's ricotta and mozzarella. Yum! Regional food favorites. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what traveling's about. <laughs> so good. Is that how a calzone is supposed to be made? It is. This is delicious. Awesome. Well, we are back to the motorhome and had a great day out in the town of Lock Haven. And we're going to wrap it up with putting a new sticker onto our sticker board. That feels like a good spot. There we go. So we really appreciate you watching our videos and uh, thank you so much for all the comments. They really mean a lot. Thanks for helping us grow our channel. Enjoy the ride.